Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the March edition of Support and Save Thor News, where I always raise rent in the first three or four days of the month. It's a, it's a crazy system, but I've been doing it for about three years, and it's worked every time so far. we got about $315 to go, with I think 30 hours left, and it's exciting. But i got to tell you, I'm prone to tangents on this one, because... It's a mad, mad world today. It seems like the mental and emotional instability is increasing amongst the people even greater than the weather instability. Okay, we're at the universe today. We're going to fluff it up with some space. In this way, the only people I'll get mad at me, hopefully, are the flat earthers and the people who say everything is fake. What? Okay. So, yep, we got a giant blue Uranus. Neptunus looking planet and we're talking about we have a brand new record smashing the record that was just set smashing the record that was just set and our search for Kuiper belt objects this is brought to us February 27th by Evan go the record for the most distant object in the solar system has been totally shattered introducing far far out at 140 astronomical units and I think the video I did before this on it was on far out. So this is FFO instead of just FO. Fantastic. Remember far out? The distant planet? Yeah, it was just like two weeks ago. The distant planet at the far reaches of the solar system that was discovered in December 2018. Well, it has been kicked unceremoniously off its pedestal as the most distant object after a short two-month reign. Well, at least you had two months. And you got to be grateful for what you get. Because, like, I'm grateful for you guys. Grateful to have a roof over my head. I'm grateful to have such a big platform where I can at least tell people what I think is my opinion or the truth. And I'm grateful to get the opportunity to make people laugh. And I'm grateful whenever people are nice. I'm grateful for the little things. Every single cigarette I get to smoke, I'm very grateful. Well, it has been kicked unceremoniously. Oh, I read that already. And if it weren't for heavy snowfall, things might have turned out differently. Wait, what? At the, at the, see, the weather is affecting everything. At the center of this discovery is Dr. Scott Shepard. And he's an Asteroid Fight Club All-Star. An astronomer at the Carnegie Institute for Science in Washington. DC, this is hot off the presses. And for people who like to stereotype things as being fake news, that like, hey, dude, it's coming out of Washington, DC. So if you don't believe anything that comes out of Washington, DC, you are not obligated to believe this. Though, Scott Shepard is a Asteroid Flight Club all-star. Okay, <clears throat> if you recognize that name, it's because Dr. Shepard has been in the news to say the least, at a time where having rock star scientists is very dangerous, especially if they're male. Uh, Scott Shepard and, oh my god, I can't believe I forgot, Chad Trujillo and Mike Brown have been total badasses. Yep. Discovering far flung planets in our solar system is what Scott Shepard does. I think it was either him or, Shep or Trujillo who found all the extra moons around Jupiter. And he's pretty good at it. <clears throat> Back in October 2018, Shepard led a team that discovered the Goblin, a planet way out there in the fringe of the solar system. Remember, I don't think these guys have any um, affiliation with NASA, so the people will be like, everything NASA tells you a lie. Well, these guys, these are, are silent rock star scientists. Don't actually work for NASA, I don't think. So that's probably why they're discovering all these badass planets and then telling people about it. Not to knock NASA. Because it's like all anybody ever does these days is knock somebody. Like everybody's out there like, you know who I hate? And I'm like, no, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to know. Everybody's got so much hate and anger. I don't really need any. Um, especially when you do this where you talk to people every day. I mean, people will literally hate your guts for disagreeing with them or talking about something that they don't believe is real. Whether it be that, like the earth is round or that like women and men both make mistakes. 
When the goblin was discovered, one of Shepard's team members was David Dolan. Um, no relation to Nolan Ryan. That was a dumb joke. From the University of Hawaii. When the discovery was made, Dolan said, We think there could be thousands of small bodies like 2015 TG387 out on the solar system's fringes. But their distance makes finding them very difficult. Unless they're really big. And yeah, when I started when I started this thing, I got all tripped out by Sedna and VP113. I was like, wow, look at their orbits. These are so amazing. That is just crazy. And now it's like it's wild. I mean, I think like that thing, how many of our solar systems can you fit in that thing? Quite a few. And I wish they had this to where it moved in like three dimensions so we could spin it around and show it in relation to, you know, Orion and other star, stars around us. And then I wonder what comets are on those orbitals. We could find out a lot of information if we knew that shit. Dwarf Planet 2015. The Goulblin or Goblin has an orbit that takes it much further from the Sun than other inner Oort cloud objects. Sedna and 2012 VP113. Since Tholan's prophetic statement, two more have been found. Yeah, it's like we're all making prophetic statements these days. Unless you're talking about politics, and most of the time people get it wrong. And then never admit they, got it, they said something and then got it wrong. Okay. First, Far Out was discovered. Far Out is a distant planet about 120 AUs away. The preliminary measurement says it's about 500 kilometers in diameter. The other name is 2018 VG18. This brings us to the heavy snowfall. Wow. It's very faint. It's on the edge of our ability to detect it. Man, I wish we'd put up a new badass telescope so it would make things easier to detect, find, and discover. Dr. Shepard was due to give a talk in Washington, D.C. on February 20th when a heavy snowfall canceled the event. Lucky you. I bet I covered that storm. With nothing to do, Shepard spent some time scouring data from the distant reaches of the solar system. That sounds like fun. Dr. Shepard and his team are searching for the elusive and unproven Planet X. Isn't everybody? I'm searching for it. But like in a jar of cookies. But I'm having the same results as everybody else. I haven't found it yet. That's not true. I don't own a jar for cookies. A hypothetical plan. And this is the difference. I'm not lying. I'm telling a joke. Man, it is so hard to tell jokes in 2019. Someone's better off not to do it. What? All right. When did I get to be such a wet noodle? And that is supposed... I guess it's after the last two, three years of straight beatings. And no victories. Okay, so it's Planet X. Planet 9, see they're calling Planet X here. And that gets me all confused up and stuff. Because it was like uh, four years ago, if you even said Planet X, people called you a wacko. And suggested you go get a tinfoil hat. And I don't even know why. What is tinfoil supposed to stop? Alien signals from Mars that turned humanity against each other. I mean seriously, the state of humanity is so unstable right now. The only people who could possibly be benefiting are aliens. Okay, so it's supposed to be more massive than Earth, because remember, mass is not weight, dumbass. And it's causing objects in the neighborhood to clump together. <clears throat> As the team examines the nether regions of the solar system looking for Planet X, they keep finding planets further and further away. And it's true, and this is a fascinating subject that I've been covering almost since the beginning of Thor News. It's really cool. That was back in the day when, you know, you could be fascinated by the stars and the planets. And anything beyond our solar system and the sun. But now it's like all you can be fascinated by is politics. Or really bad people. Now with this talk rescheduled because of snow, Shepard used his time wisely and has found out the oh so creatively named Far Far Out. Although I don't think it's its official designation or is it? The IAU is weird. But if you say the IAU is weird, you get stabbed in the ribs with metaphors. And FFO is even further away than FO. And together they're FOFO, which is kind of like foo. 
but different. It's 140 astronomical units away, which means about 140 times further from the sun than Earth is. In this rescheduled talk, which he delivered on February 21st, wow, that was fast. This is hot off the presses. Yesterday it snowed, so I had nothing to do. So I went looking through some of our data and bingo, there it was far, far out. At this point, far, far out is more than a ghost. Well, that's good to know. And I like dating way before the internet, man, and, and digital shit. Cause like where you would meet people in person and then you would have conversations in person, you know, okay. It's been detected. I hope you guys are having a great March, but nothing is yet known about its mass or anything else. Oh, sweet. It exists. And that's all we know. Uh, that's what she said. It is very faint. It is on the edge of our ability to detect it. Shepard said, we don't know anything about the orbit of this object. We just know it is far, far out. That is far, far out, man. Had you been smoking any doobage when you found it? Because then that would be far, far out. All right, all right, all right. Are you cool? Cool like how? All right, stay tuned because you can guarantee that there will be follow-up observations to try to figure out exactly what the team has found. All right, there we go. That is our latest update of new extreme dwarf planet far, far out found by all-star Asteroid Fight Club member Scott Shepard. So I want everybody to have a great day and... If you like or love or appreciate the, all the work that I've done over six years or in the last year or the last month at Thor News, please make a contribution or donation through my PayPal link located in the information box. And um, and we will keep me up and running somehow if I magically find $315. Or, or um, I don't know, I tried to come up with a joke there. But the prospect is too scary, but you guys have saved me every time. And then I've done a good job afterwards, usually, especially last month, man. I kicked butt. Although I kind of broke down near the end of the month because I worked so hard for the first three weeks, like nonstop. And then, you know, my body breaks down. I need to drink more water. You do too. And let's have some fun. Talk to you guys soon. Peace out.